what I gather so far is that there would be a really, really bright flash, like as bright a flash as um, it would be the brightest, the, the flash would be the brightest thing in the sky other than the moon itself, you know, and the sun. It would be much brighter than Venus gets. It would be, you know, um, it, the flash would only last a few seconds and then it would kind of tail off. Um, and then uh, there's some work that's been done that's been recently been published about the amount of debris that would be thrown out. Um, so we might get a meteor shower. Okay, so we might get a meteor shower if, as now seems possible, an asteroid strikes the moon in the year 2032. Welcome back to Earth Sky. I'm Deborah Bird, and that was Dr. Andrew Rivkin of the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab in Laurel, Maryland. Andy, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Andy is a planetary astronomer, and he studies asteroids, working with what's called planetary defense. That's the scientific endeavor to defend Earth against possible asteroid collisions. And he and I spoke earlier this week about this year's most exciting asteroid, the fascinating 2024 YR4. This asteroid caused a stir in early 2025 when it reached a three on the Torino asteroid hazard scale. And here's the scale behind me now. For a while, it was thought this asteroid had a slight possibility of striking Earth on December 22nd, 2032. And now we know it won't strike Earth, but it might still strike our moon. Uh, here are Dr. Andy Rivkin and I speaking yesterday. 2024 YR4, uh, when it was first discovered, was a three on this scale. And at that time, no other object had was a three and right now no no object is a three so most objects on this scale right now are at zero or one right yeah that's that's correct most most objects we find them the orbit makes it clear that they're a zero they're always going to be zero it's it's fine um 2024 yr4 was unusual um in that it it did make it to up to a three percent chance of uh, of an, uh, an impact, um, and given its size, and if you read, you know, read three there, it was a 1% a chance or greater of, of collision, so it got up to three. Um, it was not big enough to, you know, you wouldn't want to be under it, you wouldn't want your house to be there, uh, but um, no. <laughs> again, it's it's not something that was going to was gonna disrupt, you know, the, the food chain or anything like that. Um, only one other object has ever made it to a, to that level. Um, even vaguely recently, the uh, asteroid Apophis uh, was found in 2004, and it um, it briefly got up to almost three percent, or two point eight percent. It was much bigger, so it would have been much more of a problem uh, if if it were on an impact trajectory, but it isn't. Um, so, uh, but those, those are the two most notable ones since the Torino scale has been, uh, developed. Yeah. And Apophis is the, the infamous one. And, and what we're seeing on the screen here are some, is some modeling that was done because of course we don't know what either one of these asteroids looks like, do we? I mean, we don't have actually have radar images or anything like that of, of what they actually look like. Is that right? Uh, for Apophis, um, there, there is some radar, but it's not it's not terribly detailed but the radar was um used in part to to determine that it wasn't going to hit the earth because we could use the radar to really get the positions really really well um in in a way that uh it's it's a different different technique than using telescopes it can very quickly give you a, a very good position um but no we don't have close-up views of apophis the way we do for other asteroids that we've visited uh, lately uh, hopefully that will change um, so, so Apophis was a four. It was even uh, more scary than twenty twenty four YR four on the on the Torino scale. Uh, but it, but now Apophis is down what at zero or one or it's, or something like yes, that. Yes, it's it's at zero uh, because yeah, there's no zero. chance of an impact. Um, and it would have yeah, it, since it's bigger, 
like you know why r four made it to three, but it's much smaller. So Apophis being bigger, that's what made it to four. Yeah, but the fun story now, and this really is a fun story about twenty twenty four y r four, is that it might hit the moon. Yes, and that's yes. so that's so cool, and that's so interesting. So let's talk about that. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, when y r four was first discovered, of course. Uh, and we thought it, it had a chance of hitting the Earth. That's where everyone was focused. Um, so it, it uh, wasn't really at the front of everyone's minds when we got the new positions that the moon also had a chance of getting hit. Once the Earth was in the clear, um, it, it became obvious that, oh, well, this, this lunar impact is possibility is still there. So this uh, graphic basically shows uh, all of these, uh, the yellow line there. Uh, is actually composed of dots, and the dots are computer models of where possible places where YR4 could could go based on our knowledge of its orbit right now, and it it, hit, it includes the moon. Um, the 4.3 percent probability that it hits the that it might hit the moon is basically based on comparing the length of that yellow line to the size of the moon. Um, so as, as of right now, there's that chance. It's it's still of course almost a 96 percent chance that it won't hit the moon, uh, but um, but uh, it would be a spectacular event if it did. I think everyone is uh, either secretly or openly kind of rooting for it to hit the moon, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> yeah, because it would be it would be so interesting. So tell us about that. Uh, do you happen to know the moon phase when it if 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 it were to hit the moon, what what would be the moon? So let's we haven't said the date. So the, would the date be? Hmm. December twenty second, twenty thirty two, for this strike. Yes, the yes, the date. Uh, I, I believe the date would be the same. Um, um, I don't think it, it. It could be the next day. I'm trying to remember in my head, but uh, it's it's going to be basically the same time. Uh, the lunar phase is going to be not quite full. I think it's a little bit past full. Um, if it were to hit, um, I believe the moon would be visible. Uh, kind of, uh, it would be just setting kind of in the east coast of the United States. And then as you went west, it would be higher and higher in the sky. So, Yay! yeah, so the west coast would get a good <laughs> shot. Hawaii would be a, would be great. Hawaii would be a great spot to see it. And then across the Pacific and, you know, Japan and, and into East Asia. And then, of course, further south into, um, I guess, South America kind of curves away. So it might not be great for them. But um, it should be... If it happens, it should be pretty easily visible as long as you get a clear sky. Um, but what would we see? I mean, would we see like debris going up or a flash or what, what would it look like? There are um, some of my colleagues and other people in the community are, are doing studies right now to kind of figure out exactly. Um, basically, what what I gather so far is that there would be a really, really bright flash, like as bright a flash as... Um, it would be the brightest, the, the flash would be the brightest thing in the sky other than the moon itself, you know, wow. and the sun. It would be much brighter than Venus gets. It would be, you know, um, it, the flash would only last a few seconds and then it would kind of tail off. Um, and then uh, there's some work that's been done that's been recently been published about the amount of debris that would be thrown out. Um, so we might get a meteor shower. Um, not, I don't know if it would be days after or weeks after. Um, oh. but, uh, so there's, there's some question about whether, um, how that might affect satellites in orbit and satellites, oh. uh, but, um, you know, again, this is, this is early days and, uh, we have a few years and there's a 96% chance it's going to miss, but, um, yeah, it would, it not, there, the, the model suggests that if it does hit, um, nothing big enough to cause harm to earth would, would be kicked off. It would all be just like a meteor shower, just presumably a really intense one, uh, but it would just be dust uh, dust and uh, kind of pebble size. Oh, well, I think that sounds fabulous. <laughs> I, yeah, I, want that to, I want that to happen. And then do we have any information about whether it would make a crater that would be visible through amateur telescopes? Yeah, based on the JWST measurements uh, that we made um, in March, we think that YR4 itself is about 60 meters across, so not too big. Uh, then the people that do the modeling for um, for craters uh, think it would make a crater about a kilometer across or so. 
Um, and um, that size is, uh, depending on the, the conditions, uh, you know, depending on the weather that night, depending on how good your telescope is, you might just be able to see a crater that size. Um, but you would certainly be able to see, uh, just like Tycho has, has the spectacular rays, this would be much smaller, but it would have a region larger than a kilometer that would be this churned up debris that would be much brighter than than the, the background. So I think that would probably be easy to see. Uh, I think that would be certainly easier to see than than the crater itself. It would just be just be kind of just at the limit uh, of the of the telescopes. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is an artist concept of, of what an impact on the moon might look like. And you can see the Earth in the background there. So the view from the Earth and the view from the moon. Let me just ask you this one last thing. We know that Earth has been hit by asteroids in the past. And this is a picture of Meteor Crater place near and dear to my heart, took my kids there when they were little. And uh, why don't we see the big impacts now, like the one that created Meteor Crater? Oh, like, well, I think... What's the difference between now and the early solar system? Yeah, so when, um, when the solar system was forming, we had a lot of things kind of um, forming, well, forming the planets and, and, and asteroid size objects and bodies that were 10, 50 kilometers across. Um, and most of those have been kind of cleared out. So the things that we're getting now, um, there just aren't as many, and they kind of have to make their way from the main asteroid belt. So that that takes some time. And there are still there's still research going on as to whether it's kind of a steady, a steady stream of material, or if you need to have an impact in the asteroid belt, make material first and then that material makes its way in you know whether whether the impact rate is kind of punctuated it's it's whether it's steady or you get these spikes um but still meteor crater was tens thousands of years ago i don't know if it was tens of thousands of years ago um and uh we um are probably better off that we're not getting a lot of a lot of these now um so uh, i think between between one thing and another between the the asteroids uh, maybe not 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 as much material out there to hit us. Um, and uh, that's that's really the big difference between now and four and a half billion years ago. Uh, and then over the, why we haven't had one in the in human history, or at least recent uh, documented human history, uh, I think we're, we're, we're thinking that's, that's, just, uh, that's just luck on our part. Just luck. Okay, wasn't that interesting? And we're sure to hear more in the months and years ahead about whether it's true and whether 2024 YR4 will strike the moon in the year 2032. Uh, I was speaking with Dr. Andrew Rivkin, who's a planetary astronomer who works to help defend Earth from an asteroid collision. Our thanks to Dr. Rivkin for taking your time. We're Earth Sky, and I'm Deborah Bird. We're here every weekday at around midday in North America. And if you like hearing directly from scientists, please subscribe, like, and share. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky.